Before we create a service under my Fargate cluster, I need to have a load balancer to load balance into my application. So the service needs an application load balancer when I run my web application. To create a one, go to EC2 section of your console. And then under load balancers, you can find that I don't have any load balancers. So let's create a new one. Click create load balancer. We are going to create an application load balancer. So click create. And the name of the load balancer I'm going to give is my wolf app load balancer. It's going to be an internet facing one because we are connect, going to connect from the internet. The load balancer protocol is HTTP under the port 80. And for the availability zones and the VPC, I'm going to select my DevOps VPC. And select the two subnets available for that. And then click configure security settings. There's nothing to change. Click next configure security groups. If you already have a security group uh, to route traffic to port 80, you can select it here. Alternatively, you can click create a new security group, which will allow traffic from port 80 from anywhere on the internet. So let's call it uh, something like my wolf app uh, security group. Let's give the same description for this. And then click configure routing. So here I'm going to uh, set up a new target group, but later we are going to delete this when we set up our service. For the moment, leave them as it is. Uh, call it um, temp uh, target group because we are going to remove this one soon. And then click register targets. So we are not going to register any of these targets. We are going to leave that target group blank and then click review. So all looks good. And finally, click create. So this will create a load balancer. So here you can find that I have created a load balancer. It's under provisioning state. And if you go into the listeners, you already have the listener that you created. So you need to add a listener when you create your load balancer. So what I'm going to do is to delete this uh, listener because as part of the service creation, I'm going to create a new listener that can uh, direct traffic to my containers. So delete this default created one or temp uh, target group, select it and delete it. Click yes. So at some point in time, this uh, uh, the My Wolf app load balancer will become live. In that case, uh, the state will be marked appropriately. So I'm in my console again. Go to the ECS section of the console and select the cluster we just created a moment ago. And now we are going to create a service. To create a service, click this button called Create. It's going to be a Fargate uh, launch type. Task definition is my Wolf app website task. Version is the latest version. Platform keep it as the latest. Cluster is my container cluster. For the service name, uh, define a name something like my Wolf app website. And for the number of tasks I want to run, uh, give something like two. So this will create uh, two tasks that will run behind the load balancer when we run this website. So minimum health percentage and the maximum health percentage leave it as it is. And what they really mean, you can read from this uh, help buttons and go through that. It describes what happens when you do a new deployment how many of the containers or the task will run when a new deployment happens. For the deployment, keep it as a rolling update because we are going to uh, do, uh, and when we upgrade the containers, it will do in a rolling basis. Go to the next step. For the configure network, we need to select the VPC that we want to run this. So select the uh, 
DevOps VPC we uh, have been using uh, throughout our lab series. For the subnets, select uh, public subnet 1 and public subnet 2. So the two containers will be deployed under these two subnets. For the security group, like before, uh, leave this one as it is, my wolf uh, 1804. If you want to edit it, you can find that uh, it's allowing traffic uh, from port 80 from anywhere on the internet. For auto assign public IP addresses, keep it enabled. And for the load balancer type, we are going to assign a load balancer. And that's why we created the load balancer in the first part of this lab. So click application load balancer. Uh, leave the health check grade periods to zero. Uh, you can put something like 100, uh, you can put something like uh, 120. So what it says is the period of time in second that the Amazon ECS service scheduler should ignore unhealthy elastic load balancing target health checks after task has first started. We know that the, uh, it takes some time uh, for the IIS to restart uh, or whatever the website to come alive. So around 120 or even 60 seconds is a good time period for that. And uh, for the load balancer, uh, name has to be this one. We already know that. We already know that uh, we need to create a target group. So select this uh, container name port, leave it as it is and then click add to load balancers. So the reason why we deleted the default target group that the load balancer created when we created it is that if we don't do that, when we try to add it, it's going to give a port conflict. Because we deleted the target group that it got uh, it created by default, when you click this add button, it's going to be successful. So the product listener port is create new, it's going to be port 80, HTTP, Target group name also create new and you can use this one. All the other uh, things set it as default. I'm going to health check on the root uh, of the website, which is good. We are not going to do any service discovery. It's an optional one. Uh, so disable this uh, option. So make sure that you disable this. Uh, if you are running this lab environment in a uh, lockdown AWS account, uh, you may not have access to the service discovery. So, so far it looks good. Go to the next step. Do we need to set auto scaling? Uh, we are not going to set auto scaling for the moment. So select do not uh, adjust the service desired count. Go to the next step. Everything looks good. Click create service. So that's going to create the service and go to the view services. As you can see, uh, I have my container cluster. There's a one service. The desired number of tasks is two, but the running task is zero. Now the beauty of this one is uh, if you go into here, the running count is not equal to desired count and then the service knows that there's a deviation from the desired state and it's going to start a few tasks until the running count equals the desired count. So if you keep refreshing this, you can find that uh, it's now in the pending count is two. At some point in time, so one already has started, one, one container is pending, it's starting. So at some point in time, the running count equals the desired count. So now the service in a very healthy, in a good shape. So how can we access this service? Uh, you need to access it through the Elastic uh, Load Balancer that we created. Uh, so go to EC2 section, EC2 section of your console. If you go into the Load Balancer that you created, go to Load Balancers. So this is the Load Balancer we created. The DNS name for that one is given here. Copy that. So let's uh, type that one in my website, in my browser. So you can now find uh, this my wolf app uh, application running it as a service. And uh, if you use the right browser and then refresh this, you can find that it's load balancing between the two containers. Usually uh, Firefox uh, will allow you to uh, get a different container ID when you refresh the page. So this is running in two containers. 
You can find that the container ID uh, change because it's doing uh, sometimes round robin load balancing. Uh, so this is actually the private IP address of that uh, container. So if you go into your uh, the load balancers, you can find that there's a listener here, and this is the uh, the load balancer listener. And if you go into the target groups, so you have the target group uh, that uh, the ECS has created called ECS My Content My Wolf App Website. And you expand this and look at the targets. Here you can find the two container IP, uh, private IP addresses that it has assigned to newly started containers. And that's the same ID that it types. So one is 10.0.207, which is this one. And if you refresh this, uh, if it load balance into the other container, uh, it types uh, 161, uh, 10.0.1.161, 10.0.1.161. So you can find that they are running in the two uh, public subnet in the two availability zones. So if something happens to one availability zone, uh, it's always available in the other availability zone. So if you go into your cluster and then select the service, you can find the task it's running, go to tasks. So these are the uh, two tasks running and inside a task you may have uh, multiple containers. So select one of these tasks and you can find uh, the cluster it's running, uh, the status, the public and private IP address being assigned. And if you select this, uh, the containers, you can find that my wolf app container is running uh, and the things uh, like uh, the logs. So logs are very helpful, especially uh, when you are getting some errors in the container. It's a good way to look at it. So if you look at this, uh, if you click this view logs in the CloudWatch, it will take you to the CloudWatch, which has configured. So here you can find the things that it executed. Uh, it pretty much started uh, listening on this port. So if you have a console application that uh, types some messages into the console, uh, you will find them uh, appear in this uh, CloudWatch logs. So what we did in session was, uh, instead of running uh, the task manually, uh, we created a service and then under that uh, service, we are running the containers. So imagine that you are running this service, and for some reason, if one of these tasks uh, fails, what will happen? So let's go to one of these tasks, select one of the tasks, and then click Stop. So when you stop that, you can find that the service is now in not in the desired state. The running task count is one, desired task is two. So it will identify there as a deviation uh, from uh, the desired state. And the service will automatically uh, start another task so that the uh, desired count equals to the running count. It in fact started a con uh, content already. So let's wait a bit. So one container is in the one task is in the pending state. So and now uh, it become, it turned into uh, the running state. So behind the scene, the application is running fine. And uh, you will not notice uh, an issue uh, with that failed container. So we get an idea around what uh, services can do for you. And also we learn how to run your ASP.NET Core web application on the Fargate cluster. So in the next section, we are going to learn how to do an automatic deployment into this cluster and then refresh the service.